Howdy folks, welcome back to 15 Nautical Mile Arc. There is a jet. A small one, but there is a jet. A modern jet. In my sim. I never thought this day would happen. But I purchased the Air Basque Eclipse 550 NG. Because they were having a great sale on Black Friday. And I've wanted a business jet for a long time. Because it kind of fills my GA requirement, and then it gives me something modern to play with. I was using the DA42 and X-Plane 10 as my something modern, but that doesn't work in X-Plane 11. So, I used to fly the freeware version of this a lot in X-Plane 10, long before I had a YouTube channel. But then when I got really serious about simming and started a YouTube channel, I was just mostly doing GA, and then my 727 Love, which is... Slant Alpha. So, I finally got something new and modern, and here we go. You will see a lot of this aircraft. Like I said, it fulfills my GA requirement, and it gives me a taste of something modern. So, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to talk about this aircraft a lot, but we are going to fly, of course. We're going to fly from Minneapolis to Duluth. That's KMSP to KDLH. And um, you can see the skyline in the background there. Of Minneapolis. I do have some Minneapolis freeware installed. However, the Minneapolis airport here is the gateway default. Um, what can I say about this aircraft other than I love it? I've spent a lot of time with it already. I've learned how to use everything. So, unlike other aircraft where I fly and learn as I go, I learned everything about this first. I'm very, very happy. Um, I'm just staring at this flower power livery. It's super fun. I did do a practice flight with this. This video you are seeing was rehearsed and it went well. So hopefully I can do it twice in a row. Um, the only screw up I did in the rehearsal was I wanted to see how far down autopilot would take me when I got about 50 feet off the ground. The airplane veered sharp right, which in real life you wouldn't use autopilot that long anyway because um, of minimums, but... Look at that Sears behind this plane. It looks like a 2D image. That's really funny. Still looks 2D. Anyway, um, I don't want to blab too much. If you want to research this thing, go ahead. Be aware that um, if you do get it yourself, you will need to also download the GNS430 data from X-Plane 10 and put in a custom folder or else your GPS won't work. This has its own Skyview system, which we'll talk about at length as we get going here. But um, it's also a frame rate killer, this scenario with another aircraft, with my new adjustments, I was getting in the high 30s for frames. I think with this aircraft, we're getting about 18 to 22. So it is a frame rate killer, but hopefully in X-Plane 11.10, and with future Vulcan updates, hopefully, um, it'll just increase from there. So, we have the GPU running, we have the cabin lights going, so that we can board this thing it only seats a couple people so what we're going to do first is we're going to first of all hop inside and we're going to lower some shades because the sun is up actually let's lower this one and oh, you see the light change and there we go just because we can and it's super fun and we're also going to choose our passengers um, actually I think we're pretty set we've got two children and two adults and the captain and we need to add some luggage there we go we need to increase our fuel this aircraft by the way remembers everything so when you go from flight to flight it remembers so I had this full and then I did a couple flights and as you could see the fuel was way down after my flights now in real life you would only carry as much fuel as you actually needed but for the sake of testing it. So even though I had reloaded the aircraft, the fuel was remembered. It remembers a whole bunch of stuff. It's really kind of cool. There's way more fuel than we need, but I'm going to keep it there anyway. Um, what else is there? We'll talk about this panel in a moment. I don't know how popular this plane is. Um, I've known about it, but I don't know if any of my viewers and regular subscribers know much about it, but it's super fun, expensive, like $35 or almost $40 or something. I got it on sale for super cheap though. So. All right, so what else? We got the people, we got the luggage, we got the fuel. So next we're going to remove static elements, which is called chocks. You can get that panel here too, by the way, off the side. So we'll remove the chocks, we'll close the door. We gotta keep the GPU going though, or we can't start the engines. Very specific way to work this. So this will work as a cold and dark tutorial too, by the way. 
although it won't be labeled as such on YouTube, so people may not s discover it, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to do everything. So, we removed our chocks. You can't start engines unless you remove them. You can't start engines without GPU. Doors closed, so we're going to hop up front. And also note that the livery inside changes based on your outside livery, by the way. And there are lights turned on up there. They actually work. They actually do a lot of good stuff. You can also open and close the door from inside, by the way. Right, so we hop up front, we do the system battery. And then we pull on our oxygen. And we make sure our cabin air is set to normal, which is kind of hard to get. We get the GPS going there as well. Bus ties go to auto. We will now test our warnings. And then we'll test ELT on for a second. And then back to arm. All right, make sure our gear says green and it does. We'll turn on our external lighting, which will turn that up and this up. And then we will check our fuel on the panel, which is way more than we need. We'll check our altimeter now. So if we pull up the map and we zoom in on the airport and we click on it, we can go to details and 3002 for altimeter. So what's cool about this guy is you can click now right there and type in 3002 there you go instead of going through your menus down here and your soft keys and you just click on what you want to bring up it's supposed to simulate a touch screen in real life all right so now we're going to do our gps and our radios and everything so it's a very very short flight so we are just going to do the entire flight plan including approach right here right now so let's hop up here this is the skyview system actually skyview system is on the left this is your gns 7.30, I think, and then the smaller one down there is your 6.30. We'll use them both. So I'm not going to go through every single detail on here because that would take a couple hours. And the manual that comes with this thing is super good. But anyway, you can see we have lots of things we can do. Um, so anyway, flight plan, flight plan. Click on flight plan. I have our plan already in here. Duluth to Minneapolis. Now we're going to invert it and activate it so now it's Minneapolis to Duluth now we could take off if you wanted to however it's such a short short flight that we're going to do our approach now so we'll click on Duluth we'll load our arrival we are going to do ILS runway 27 and there's no stars or any transitions or anything and we'll use Duluth now we do have to make a change because if you look Duluth VOR and then Ando and then out to worse and then back to Ando. That obviously is going to make us go back and forth. So we'll get rid of Duluth. We'll delete the waypoint. And we'll delete Ando. So now we'll go from Lenox to Warsaw. We'll make a sharp left turn to Ando. We'll engage ILS. And then we'll go to Duluth. So what we need to do as well is we need to waypoint info. Then we'll do runways 27 now we're going to tune the ILS which is already tuned because um because I did my practice flight and we'll set OBS to 270 so now this is our ILS our ILS now is already set up for runway 27 and if we had to we would flip that but it's the same thing because I practiced you get the idea so now that's in the GPS as well normally you would do this closer to the airport when ATC tells you where you're landing but it Again, it's such a very short flight. We're doing it all right now. And I wanted to show you all this stuff when we're not stressed out about flying. So there's our GPS. Our flight plan in the GPS. That easy. It's like a simplified FMS. There's no vertical navigation, though. So in the Beechcraft, when we do this, we'll calculate our top of descent. And then it'll count down. And when the timer gets to zero, we descend based on our profile, right? This doesn't have that. At least I can't find it. I've, I have a question on the forums asking about it by the time you see this video though it would have been answered so um as far as i know i cannot calculate my top of descent i already know there's no vnav so it's not like an fms where it'll bring me down automatically like in a jet but i at least was hoping i could click on something to calculate it even down here and have like a countdown timer then we know when it gets to zero we can descend just like we do in the beachcraft but not happening in this one Anyway, so then we can go home if you want to, and we can go to map, and there it is, or we have a map over here, which you can zoom out if you want to and play with that to your heart's content. So we'll actually use that map, 
we're not going to use this map. On this, we're actually going to, oops, my thing's in the way. This, we're actually going to use flight plan, and we'll just watch this countdown. That's what we're going to use. But other things you can do with this, you can check weather, look at that, it's clear skies. Although, Metar and Sky Vector just told me that it's cloudy, whatever. Um, there's our winds from 320, so we're going to take off on runway 30 left. In Minneapolis, I'll land on 27 in Duluth. And what else can we do with this? There's terrain on here, which actually works around the ground, so it's all red. Um, utilities, waypoint info, map traffic. We can play with that. Oh, I mean, all the stuff you can do. Charts. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you this. What do you mean chart unavailable? Airport info. I do two have charts. I do two have... Where's my chart? Hey. I loaded charts before we started. Um, we have charts, I promise. I don't know where they went because I put them in there. Very strange. Let me see if there's a chart for... Um, uh, let me do something here. Let's go to Duluth. Waypoint info. Charts. Okay, we have charts for Duluth. So this is what our runway or airport looks like. So when you land, we know where to go. Without Googling it on my phone, I can just bring up the chart now. Or we can do the approach. Here's runway 27, the approach. You can change it here, by the way. I have them both in there. Oh, we can do the RNAV. That's what the RNAV looks like. But we're going to do ILS. So um, it's not going to do the ARC. I was hoping it would fly the ARC. It would, I was hoping it would go to Dayar and then it would fly our 15 nautical mile ARC. Oh, you've heard that before. 15 nautical mile ARC. That's where I get my YouTube channel name from, is this approach right here in Duluth. So anyway, um, I was hoping we'd fly the Ark, but it won't do it. It's just going to take us direct to Warsaw right here in the winter step glide slope. So isn't that awesome? Isn't that fun? Oh, this stuff is so cool. We can go back to here. We can go back. We can just do whatever we want. It's so much fun. So anyway, that's what you can do with this thing. Like I said, I could do a whole video on this, but I don't think I need to. Um, but we'll keep the flight plan up so that we can see our progress. We'll come down here then. And we'll click down, click on Utilities, Timer, and then we will have our flight timer here. Piece of cake. Simple as that. We did forget to do one thing. I need to go to Map for this, and then we're going to do our CDI to Sky View. So it turns purple. That's so the autopilot will follow the GPS. I don't know why I can only do from there. Actually, I take that back. You can click right on here and do it too. You can do it there as well. I forgot about that. But anyway, um, that is how we're going to use GPS with our autopilot. Piece of cake. No radio, well, we already tuned our radio for ILS. In fact, I don't even know if we need to do that. I don't even know if you need to put in your radio for ILS if you're using GPS. I don't know. I just know that the way this we're doing it today, I practiced and it worked. So we're just going to leave it like that. Um, what else? Our map view which I need my extra presets. I'm looking forward to X-Plane 11 .10 to add more presets. Your map, you can do a bunch of stuff. I've got weather turned on, although there's no weather. TCAS, although there aren't any other planes. A um, lot of waypoints, holy moly. Keep it zoomed out like that. Otherwise, uh, what else is there to do? Nothing else. We're going to start these engines. Starting the engines is so easy. All you do is you'll start battery. And you come up here, and you turn them on. That's it. That's all. And it'll start. And you can watch your engine information here. You can also do things where you have a map show up there, too. And you can configure this panel to just be map, engines, attitude, none of all three, mix and match, different order. Whatever you want to do. I like to keep it like this. I just look over to the right from my map. And then start the other engine. You turn on the other engine. See how easy that was? Super, super simple. And then once it starts up, we turn on both generators. And we disconnect the GPU. So we can either go to the back panel or we can click on here and disconnect the GPU like that. All right. So while that's stabilizing, let's talk about this back panel for a second. Um, options, there's like sim options, reflections and things, which have no effect on frame rates, at least not for me. Your ground stuff you can do, GPU 
chocked or pre-flight elements and your door. Your weight, your busy people and fuel. Sound is your sim sounds. Lights, you can turn on or off all these lights. Remember I said those are on, now they're off. Let me turn them back on. See, now they're on. So we'll keep them on for now anyway. And then your sim flashlights and then your shade control. So for example, we can do this and our shade will close. I love that. I remember doing that in the um, Honda Jet. This reminds me of the Honda Jet, but this is obviously newer. So anyway, so there you go. We're gonna keep our lights for now. So we'll hop back up here. And what else is there to do? Um, we're supposed to adjust trim, although I haven't found trim on here. I can't figure out where trim. Oh, there it is, right there. Never mind. I found trim. It's right there, right above the heading thing. Um, flaps to take off or take off now. Anti ice. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do anti ice the other day, and everything froze up. My windshield, all my windows were completely frozen, white with dots. I could not see anything. It was so awesome and so realistic. Now eventually we'll use our window defog, but as you can hear, it's very loud, so we're not going to do it right now. All right, taxi lights can come on. There we go. Now we're going to set up our autopilot. Pretty simple stuff. Now check this out. All you do, click on your altitude. You can type in your desired altitude. That's probably too high. Let's not go 29,000. Let's go 21,000. 21,000. And we'll do alt change, which means it's going to look for 21,000. We're going to start with our heading. And then once we get established and away from the airport, we'll switch over to nav. Now remember, nav will do GPS because it's purple here. This would mean nav would do localizer 1 or nav 2, but GPS. But we're going to start with our heading bug. We'll talk about that in a moment. That is all there is. We got our altitude with alt change and heading for now. We'll do yaw damper in a moment and autopilot in a moment. We're not going to use auto throttle, although you can. It just saves it gas, which we don't need as well. It does more than that, but for the purposes of what we're doing, it would just save us gas, and we don't need to save gas. So here we go. We are going to taxi out now. Um, we'll take a parking brake. It takes a lot of throttle to get this rolling, and then once it does, it takes off in a hurry, so you got to be really careful. Come on. There we go. All right. We're going to taxi to the right. Take off on 30 left. Pretty simple, otherwise, not much to say. There's Minneapolis skyline just about to disappear off your left. Oh, I just forgot to mention where we are and the airport. We are at Signature Flight Support. This is where the Beechcraft 1900 takes off from Marvin Windows. And this is like your business area, so to speak. Signature doesn't look like that at all, but close as they could get when they modeled it, I guess. Oh, can you see the shade shut from the outside? You can. That's awesome. Huh? That's pretty cool. Let's hop back out here. Alrighty. I'm not sure why I'm getting flashing textures. I've mentioned before that never used to be a problem. And then all of a sudden, one day it started being a problem, and it's been a problem ever since. I'm not sure what's going on. Man, my throttles are like three quarters of the way up. There we go. I think the way this is modeled is that is considered off. Yes, yeah, see. I think... The way this is modeled, and I've had that problem in the beach, is um, that signature area is like considered off the pavement for some reason in the sim. Because now we're moving just fine with hardly any throttle at all. Alrighty, it's a pretty simple taxi. Um, those of you from the Minneapolis area, if you want to get your bearings off to the right is Fort Snelling Cemetery. Um, we used to, as kids, go up on the hill and watch airplanes take off. And land. It was super fun. There are your main terminals over there. Oh, there's a big jets in the sim. And I need to um, get back on the taxiway. <laughs> Minnesota River is behind those trees up ahead. Otherwise, enough said. I will see you at the end of the runway. We're about to pull on a 30 left as we planned. I used to have an uncle that worked in those hangars straight across the way there and did repair. I think it was for Northwest Airlines at the time. That's what I need to find is a Northwest Airlines livery for my 727 fleet. Hmm. I haven't seen one of those yet. I've seen the old Delta and the old Sun Country, but not Northwest. Anyway, that's for a whole other scenario. Look how huge this runway is. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Gigantic. All right, let's pull out and stop a moment. We have a few things to do here. 
So let's stop here. Set the parking brake. We're going to push the heading bug. Where is it? So it lines us up with the direction we're facing. Confirm the flaps. Landing lights will come on now. All the cabin lights will come off. And all the shades will come up. All up. There we go. All shades up, cabin lights off, set the heading bug. We are going to start our timer. There it goes. And we are now going to take off. We've got to be very careful to throttle in this because you will start on fire and it doesn't take very long. So we're actually going to let it peak. And then we're going to come back to get it out of the yellow. See how it's in the red? And I am having a hard time controlling this for some reason because I'm watching my gauges. I'm not watching the runway. There we go. We are out of the yellow. And we can take off now. Rotate. There we go. Gear up. Flaps up. And autopilot engaged. We got to get a vertical speed going. Come on. Vertical speed. It's supposed to do your IES, but we'll just do vertical speed. So you can click on autopilot, pitch, vertical speed. There we go. There we go. That's smoother. Um, I think the model is meant to use IES hold, but this seems to be smoother if you use vertical speed. So, I mean, yeah, vertical speed. So let's look out the window. Very nice. We are going to go on nav. Hold in a minute. We're just use heading hold for a moment so we can have a look around. Very beautiful. Nice high frame rates on the clear day. There's St. Paul in the background. Diamond Lake, Lake Hiawatha, Mississippi River. And there we've got some other lakes. Cal Harriet Calhoun, Lake the Isles, and Cedar Lake. And you can see all the Lake Minnetonka already. Alright, let's use the heading bug now by going over here and we'll start to intercept our GPS we just had to clear the airport first so away we go as soon as we get close to GPS we'll hit nav because nav is set for sky view but I just want to get away from the airport a little bit here we should have a nice view of the city and we will look at that amazing they have some nice views as well of South Minneapolis and out here just gonna see sky oh no you can see crystal or bush lake a little bit very nice now that the Sun is um, gonna be in the way whoops now that the Sun is gonna be in the way let's close some shades why did not that close there you go well you should be good to go um, vertical speed 2100 up to 21,000 feet. Engines are not in the red. Speed is in the green. Nothing else to do yet until we get to 10,000 feet. But gears up. Flaps are up. Landing lights are still on. And what else? Well, that's about it. So we're just going to kind of go on this heading until we get closer to our GPS path. And then once we do, we'll engage nav on the autopilot we are flying over minneapolis mississippi river hennepin bridge nicollet island northeast minneapolis i used to live there and i don't think we can see kane yet we'll fly right over kane though all right we're about to intercept gps so let's hit nav and it should churn us and it will Notice our yaw damper engage when we engage autopilot, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. So there we go. Nothing to do now until we reach 10,000 feet. And then we're going to turn off our landing lights and all that good stuff. And the checklist for this says to engage standard pressure on the barometer at 10,000 feet, which I find interesting. But that's because this was made, the designers are in Europe. So a little bit different than the U.S. So we're coming up on 10,000 feet. We'll turn off our landing lights now. 
Otherwise, we're all set. So we'll do a little bit of sightseeing. I will calculate top of descent off camera here because I got to do some math since the computer won't do it for me. And I'll check in with you in a little bit. All right, coming up on 18,000 feet, so we'll hit standard for the barrow. The transition altitude is 18,000 feet in the United States and Canada. That's what I meant earlier when I said the 10,000 feet in the checklist from the developer was interesting, because like I said, it's developed in Europe, Belgium, I think. So we're good to go. Landing lights are off already, long time ago. Um, barrow sets a standard. Nothing to do now except follow our GPS over here and calculate top of descent. So we're about to hit our one and only waypoint right in the middle there. And then we'll move on to the next, well, the approach pretty much. It's a short flight. So we're 21 minutes out. I'm going to descend about 1,000 feet per minute. We want to get down to 3,200. And how do I know that, you ask? Let's check this out. So we'll go to Duluth. We'll do waypoint info, we'll go to charts, and if we want to, whoops, not that one. Uh, we want to go to approach, and the ILS is 3200. Come down here. There we go, 3200 feet. So, we can go back here now and back again. So, if we're at 21,000, and we want to get down to 32, let's just say 3,000. That is a difference of math, math, math. 21 take away 3 is 9, 7, 18. 18,000 feet, we got to come down. So we got to come down 18,000 feet. And we're going to do about 1,000 feet per minute. So we're 22 minutes out. So when we get to about 18 minutes or so, we'll start coming down, which means we're going to come down in 3 minutes. So there we go. That is how you determine your top of descents when the computer won't do it for you and um, that's it so I am going to do some sightseeing with you it would be very quick we only have two minutes now or is it one minute now for one minute we'll do some sightseeing and then I'll talk about top of descent All right, it is time to come down. I think we overstayed our welcome. Yeah, we did. So we are going to put this down to 3200. Enter, and we're going to do an alt change, and we're going to come down about 1,000 feet per minute. Actually, I think I can put it in here, can't I? 1,000 feet, negative. There we go, 1,000 feet per minute. And we'll just click on autopilot and make sure it's actually doing VS, and it is this time. 
So all we need to do now is control our speed because we're going to get in the red very quickly. We could use auto throttle if we wanted to. I guess we could. But um, we'll just manually control the throttle. So what we need to do then is we need to come over here and we'll see how we're way ahead of schedule because I was doing more sightseeing. I want to lower this a little bit. And then when our thousands that we need to descend matches our minutes, I'll bring it back up to a thousand feet per minute. So we need to get down to 3,000, so that's just under 7,000 we need, or 17,000 we need to go. About 16,000 now. And we are 12 minutes, so yep, we're going to keep descending, except I don't know why it's... Do we, see, I don't know why it does that. It like hunts around a little bit. We're set to 1,400, but it's not doing 1,400. Probably because my speed is so much, we'll overspeed. Yeah, there we go. Okay, when I brought the throttles back, now we're coming down. I guess it's smart enough to know if we descend that quickly, we'll overspeed. Because I do not have auto throttles on. I just want to double check once more. Still says VS, and it does. Okay. Now we're coming down 1400. And yeah, what's your time say? Again, 12. So 19 take away 3 is 16. So we're still way ahead of schedule. <laughs> because we're 12 minutes away, so let's bring this down to about 1,700, reduce throttles. Slowing down will also buy us more time. The slower we go horizontally, the more time we'll get to descend. So we'll descend a little more steeply and slowly till we catch up. And there you go, that's all it is. Why does it feel like we're crooked? I don't know. What's your winds say? This tells you the winds, by the way. 370 degrees, 50 knot winds, 5-0. Coming from 306 degrees. See how that works? The arrow tells you the direction of the wind and its speed. That's crazy. That's awesome, though. So anyway, we're just going to manage our descent. And when we get to our next waypoint over here, all we'll do is we'll let the airplane turn. And then we'll hit approach on autopilot. And it'll intercept glide slope. And it'll bring us down to about 300 feet or so. We could look at the chart for the minimums if we wanted, but... We'll just come down and then I'll kill autopilot land manually. So that's all there is to it. So I'm just going to step back here and manage my descent because we're still ahead of schedule. So uh, enjoy the flights and I'll touch back with you in a moment. I'm just cutting back in here to bring up our new barometric temperature so if we can get to the Duluth airport or pressure I meant we can go to Duluth there we go can we get can we see Duluth oh where is it there it is Duluth details 2994 so let's click on this 2994 enter there we go and the winds are still insane if you look if you're paying attention to the tail it's just crazy so we're 10 minutes out and we have 11,000 miles to go so we're still behind schedule so we're still going to keep our steep descent and once this lines up oh we're almost lined up once that gets to about 12,000 or so we should be back on schedule then i'll slow down our descent to a thousand feet per minute well now it's at nine so now we're still behind it might take a couple thousand yet before we actually convene. But this, this is so fun. There's so much we can do with this aircraft. I just really enjoy it. I just think it's funny how we're like sideways, kind of, and at an angle. But at least the wind is slowing down, down to 37 miles an hour or knots. Oh, that's super fun. Let's hit the heading bug in case I screw up. Uh, where's heading? There it is. Come on, push, push. There we go. We're still going to follow GPS, though. All right, well, ooh, we're getting closer. You can actually see Lake Superior out there. If you know where to look, there's Lake Superior, the North Shore, the Bay, the Eastern Shore. Duluth is right over here. So we're very, very close. We just got to slow this bird down because, holy cow, we're coming in. <laughs> so nine, okay, we got how many thousands to go? Three, eight, eight thousand to go. Eight minutes out. 
Okay. Okay. We're we're caught up now. So let's bring this back to a thousand. Go up and then slow slower descent a little bit. I'll still keep it at eleven hundred. Just because. Alright, there we go. I'm just gonna manage the throttle so we can keep their speed up as much as we can. It's only been a 19 minute flight, isn't that awesome? This is over a two and a half hour drive, by the way, in real life. And it's gonna be less than half an hour flight. Alrighty, let's do a little bit more sightseeing and then we'll um then we'll meet back in a moment. Right, we're going to go over our landing and descent checklist, so we're going to make sure all the shades are up. And they shall be going up now, there we go. Landing lights are already turned on off camera, but they're on. Altimeter is set, too early for flaps, too early for gear. The yeah, damper will come off when autopilot comes off, and we are all set. These winds are still pretty crazy. See how they change though? Now they're pointing more in line with the runway, so we picked a good runway. Providing they're that, that, um... Same direction on the ground. So let's see, I did change our altitude to 3100 for autopilot just so I make sure we'll come in under the glide slope. But we're at 8,000, five minutes to go, 5,000 to go, 1,000 a minute, five minutes. Perfect. There we go. We're just going to sit here until we meet up with our next waypoint, which if we zoom out should be pretty close. There it is. There you can see Lake Superior much more clearly. See the outline of the water there. And then over here is the bay. Not the bay, but the port. Largest freshwater port in the world. Very beautiful area. I really hope a scenery developer makes some scenery for this. Even pay where. I would definitely buy it regardless of the cost. So as you get closer to our waypoint, we're, uh, you can see we're actually going to make a sharp left turn. But plenty of room to catch glide slope. It would be just fine. If we were doing the GPS approach, it would be home of Cirrus. would be our waypoints. Home of Cirrus, because Cirrus is headquartered here in Duluth. There you can see the man-made sandbar. They, when they dug out the port, they made this sandbar. And now there's a bunch of houses on there, and there's a little airport right there called Sky Harbor Airport, which we've been to many times in the sim. Duluth Airport is over there. Downtown Duluth is right here. And Canada is another two-hour drive over there. All right, two minutes and a thousand and a half to go, so we're back on schedule there. Slowing down gained us lots of time. That's awesome. I don't know why we're leaning so far to the left. That is so strange. Maybe the winds are just that crazy. 14, I don't know. It's not that crazy. There's a nice view. This then, this is Wisconsin here. There's a border, Minnesota. Wisconsin right there. There you can see it better. All right, approaching altitude. So now you gotta be really good on the throttles here. Make sure we don't go too slow or too fast. I wanna get to the airport, but I don't wanna come in hot either. Isn't that a nice view of the area? Very pretty. And we'll check outside briefly before we have to fly the plane. There you go. Duluth, Minnesota over here. Superior, Wisconsin over here. There are a couple airports there as well as on the sandbar. Duluth Airport is straight out that way above, above our plane. All right. Should be about time to make our turn, and it is. So let's keep an eye on these throttles. There we go. Right on schedule. 3120, 3100 with less than a minute to go. We're a little ahead, I guess. Just a little ahead. But not much. Awesome. 
The student had to do that by hand and make adjustments and calculate all that manually. Not bad at all. Alright, so we're just going to make keep an eye on that GPS so we make our turn. I guess, like I said, I could also do the map there. I said to keep looking over to the right, but... Alright, we're about to make that turn, and then we'll engage approach on the autopilot. The radio's are already tuned. Like I said, I don't know if I have to tune the nav radios for this, or if the GPS would automatically pick up ILS. I'm not sure. But I like to play with stuff, so I tune the radios anyway, using the little computer thing. The little touchscreen. And of course, if we wanted to, we could pull up the map here as well. And that actually shows you the water and everything. And we could pull up train if we wanted. Of course, we're fine there. Nothing to worry about. Weather. That looks good. But let's do the flight plan. And we're starting our turn. Here we go. So we're going to make our turn based on GPS. And then we'll hit approach as soon as we complete the turn. And I'm not sure why we're at, I guess that's close to 3,100. It's like we're a little lower than autopilot, but whatever. Alright, so we do have to keep our speed below 350 or 250, and we are. So 245 is good, 244 is good. And as soon as we make this turn, we should, we should see the airport out there. This should line us up with the runway exactly. I'm tipping my head sideways in real life. It's kind of funny. What do these people get to see? Sky. Water. Land. Alright. Looks like it's going to turn us back. When I did my practice, it didn't have to hunt this much. But there's the airport. Right there. So, let's let this stabilize. And then we'll hit approach. There we go. And like I said, I don't know how it works it just does at least it did on my on my practice flight we intercept a glide slope and it did everything just fine so all I had to do was reduce throttle until minimums and then I landed so hopefully that works so let's start slowing down a little bit because once we come over land it's gonna go fast very fast so here we go Landing checklist, flaps down, gears down, a little too early for both of those. Yaw damper will come off when autopilot comes off, landing lights are already on. Shades are up, lights in the cabin are off. And let's see how this goes. We have not intercepted glide slope yet. But we should any moment. I'm just going to keep our speed coming down here a little bit. Try and get gear and flaps out soon because aircraft in real life normally have the gear up by now so here we go gear down and I'll give us some drag and first set of flaps down keeping our speed up though there we go glide slope has been intercepted let the computer do all the work We'll just wait till we get to minimums and we'll land. So we can look outside a little bit since we're on autopilot still. Isn't that beautiful? Looking to the north, looking to the south. Holy cow, does that look awesome. Wow. And looking out ahead of us. And keeping an eye on speed. There we go. That looks awesome. Very nice, very wooded area. Not much crosswind, just a little bit. And lakes, looking to the north, etc. All right, let's land the plane. Just keeping, keeping our speed under control. We'll slow down a little bit more. So we get the second set of flaps out. And I totally didn't. I don't know where I put my flap schedule. So we'll let flaps out now. It's probably a little fast for that, but I don't. Don't bother commenting. I'll look it up as soon as the video is over. But anyway. We'll keep going here a little bit more in autopilot, just because we can. Very nice. Well, the GPS worked for us. Let's slow down a little bit more. We're still going. We're still pretty hot. Now I think this is subject to the ground handling issue, where we get like 10 feet above the ground and X-plane plops us down. 
So if I do bump the landing, I'm pretty sure it's not my fault, at least not in X-Plane 1105. Um, all right, autopilot is gone. I don't know why we're off to the right so far, but here we go. Now we're getting kind of slow. I don't know why we're off to the right like that, but whatever. 300 feet. Two hundred feet. I think we're a little fast. Like I said, I had my speeds and everything printed out, and I don't know where I put it. So we're just doing this off feel. Yeah, we have to be hot. Yep, smooth it out. Okay, we're gonna plop. Is X plane gonna plop us? Hmm. Yep, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Well, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was still bad, despite X-Plane. Yeah, we're going to stop in time for that. No, we're not. Almost. Fob's coming in. So, I, fl I know I floated that landing. That's because I was expecting X-Plane ground effects to suck me into the runway. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. So I was trying to try to compensate for that. So instead I floated... Oh well, the ground effect still got me anyway, so regardless, because I definitely didn't stall, but anyway, nothing we can do about it until 11.10 is stable. Right now still in beta. Alright, let's get off this runway here. Where are we going? Um, let's see, we'll pull up here. Alright, we don't have a co-pilot, so let's just stop here a second. Set the parking brake, come down here, landing lights off, taxi lights can come on, and the rest of this can stay the way it is. Let's come back here, people can turn their lights on now. They can play with their shades all they want to. There we go. And let's taxi. Oh, there's, I think that's Cirrus over there. Let's see. Um, we're not going to fit by the main hangers. Well, let's do this. I forgot we can do this. Let's go here, here, information, here we go. So we landed on 27, which is there, and we're on Alpha 3, I think, which is here. Uh, let's see, there's FBO. All right, we're actually on Alpha 2. So we're going to go to the left, because FBO is to the left if we're on Alpha 2. Um, it's just that first building right away. So that's what we're going to do. I guess it's where that office building is, right in front of us with the satellite on top. That's what we'll do. We'll go there. Although it looks like our pavement to get there, we passed. Because um, there's no way to get to FBO. So I guess we're going to go to the hangars instead. So... Let's slow that down a little bit. Hop in here. Where are we going? I don't know. The modeling isn't exactly like the chart, so let's just let's just go over here. We'll call this FBO. We got something exciting going on over here anyway. All right, we'll just pull in here. I stopped the timer, by the way, off camera. Thirty-seven minutes, forty-five second flight time. So not too bad, much faster than driving, although by the time we get to the airport, get loaded up, get to the other airport, get off the airplane, get your ride. It's not much different than just driving, but it's fun, especially if you could stay at the airport or whatever. Let's just, um, let's just stop here. We don't jet wash everybody. Let's just stop right here in the middle, get in everybody's way. All right, stop, set the parking brake, which is there. I, I bumped. I bumped autopilot instead of my parking brake. They're the same button. I just hit the wrong side. All right, let's see. Parking brake, let the throttles idle for one minute. Air source comes off. Oxygen comes off. Turn off the engines now. We'll say it's been a minute. Turn off the engines, connect the GPU, 
There we go. Start battery comes to off. Generators go to off. Bus ties go to off. System elements goes to off. However, there's one thing I wanted to show you first. Let's make it dark a second. I wanted to show you what this looks like in the dark. It's amazing. I can get it to be dark. Come on, get darker. Well, anyway. If we're in the middle of the air and there aren't any there's no dynamic lighting, look how this panel just lights up. Isn't that cool? How everything lights up like that. It looks better when you're in the sky alone, but I just wanted to show you that. I think that looks super awesome. So we'll turn that off. We'll make it daytime. There we go. Now we'll turn the system battery off. Now with the GPU, do the lights still work? I don't think so. Yes, they do. Good. That is good to know because um, I like when those... Oh, good. I like when the little nuances work with your GPU. Because some aircraft that doesn't do any good with the GPU. Otherwise, open up the door. And everything is off, right? Yeah, because the GPU is on. That's the only thing running is GPU. All that stuff's off. All right, good. Everybody has their luggage now. Oh, well, my lights are working, though, with the GPU. Let's turn those lights off. There we go. This can come off, although it's not in the checklist. I'll add that to the checklist. All right, let's hop outside now. There we go. Oh, there's other people sitting in there. Check that out. What? That's awesome. You can see wearing a shirt. Yeah. Oh, there's the kids. Oh, see when I put kids and adults, it actually made them kids. Oh my gosh, that is... Those little touches are so awesome for the immersion. That is so cool. Wow. All right, everybody. Well, it is time to get out. I'm going to turn the GPU off because it's making a lot of noise. There we go. How awesome is that? That is so cool. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed the flight from Minneapolis to Duluth. Hope these folks enjoy their little vacation. Not sure what they're going to do. There's so much stuff to do in Duluth if you ever get there in real life. Take a day or a day and a half and enjoy yourself in Duluth. It's an amazing place. Just like this is an amazing aircraft. It's expensive unless you get it on sale. But if you're a GA guy or GA gal or GA person like I am, um, don't be afraid to get this modern jet because it's like flying GA. But you can get places quickly and you can play with a modern cockpit and it is well worth it. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next one.